Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're talking about distributed log style message brokers like Azure Event Hubs and Apache Kafka. So before we dive in, let's just remember what we talked about with topics and subscriptions in our previous video. Uh, the topic is the name of our sending application sends messages to on our message broker. And a subscription is like a queue for each receiving application that wants to receive those messages. And so whenever we send a message to a topic, that message broker will get all the subscriptions for that topic and copy the message into each of those subscriptions. However, on a distributed log style broker, it actually works a little bit differently. Uh, so a topic on, a, on one of these kind of brokers is like a queue uh, and they don't actually have a separate subscription idea at all. So messages that are sent to the topic are stored in order in the topic, just like they are a queue. And every message that does get sent to a, a topic on, on one of these brokers uh, gets a number allocated to it. And we call this number its offset. And this is like the ID of the message effectively. It's like the messages index in the topic. It's how we keep track of the messages. And so when we wanna read the messages, uh, because they don't have any kind of subscription that's managing for you. So instead of the broker knowing which message you need to receive, you kind of have to know that. When a client connects, it has to ask to start receiving messages from a specific place in the topic. And so it can either ask for the, the oldest message in a topic, so effectively start reading from the beginning, it can ask to start reading from the end, or it could actually tell the broker the offset of the message it wants to start receiving from. And so we see that coming on here. I wanna read from offset one, the broker replies, here's the message from offset one, and then we're able to say next, give me the next message, so that would be two, uh, next, you know, three, and so on. What's important to note here is that when the message has been received by and read by a receiver, it does not get deleted from the topic. The messages stay in the topic until the message broker decides uh, to receive. And that's normally through some kind of configuration for how long messages should be retained for. But one receiving application receiving a message doesn't mean it gets deleted. It still it stays in that topic for when other applications come along and want to read it. So when we want to scale out our applications on a traditional message broker, we'd use competing consumers. We'd have two receiving applications who want to read from the same subscription. The message broker would just take different messages from the front of the queue and give them to the different receiving applications. That isn't how it works on one of these brokers. Uh, so what we actually have to do is break the topic up into what we call partitions. Uh, these are effectively like sub queues to the topic. And so messages are added to the partitions either round robin, so one after the other, everyone taking a turn, or because of some form of partition key. And so here is an example of round robin. So basically it just goes into partition one, then two, then one, then two, then one, then two, and so on through all the messages that are received. The other option is to have a, some kind of partition key. And so in this example, we might say that all the even, all the even number partition keys go to the first partition and the odd ones go to the, sec the second partition. This will normally just be through some form of like hashing algorithm on the partition key that you provide when you send a message on one of these uh, brokers. But what it effectively means is it's deterministic which partition a particular message with a particular key will go into. Uh, and we use this, if you wanna send all the messages about a particular customer or a particular order uh, to the message broker, they'll all effectively end up in the same partition because they'll have the same partition key. When we wanna read from partitions, uh, we actually read from, from the topics uh, overall. And typically on most of these brokers, the, the, the broker and the client library kind of negotiate as to which partition you end up reading from. Um, and the optimal way of doing this is to have one receiving application for each partition that you have in the queue. So when you set up a queue, if you set it up with two partitions, uh, the ideal kind of the highest throughput kind of approach would be to have two instances of the receiving application received from those. If you do have less, so if you set up a, a, a topic with two partitions and only have one receiving application, it will, uh, both of those partitions end up getting read by the receiving application. And so the message broker and the client libraries by default will just give you a message from each of those partitions in turn. So you'll get a message from partition one, then a message from partition two, uh, and so on and so forth, swapping back and forth. Um, it is uh, possible to have lots of receiving applications more than you have uh, partitions in the topic. If you do that um, by default, that the extra receiving applications here, we see that we've got two partitions and three receiving applications. That third receiving application won't actually receive any messages. It won't process anything. Uh, if we attempted to receive messages from one of these partitions, it would actually receive duplicate messages that one of the other receiving applications has, right? So if we try and receive from partition one, uh, then, it, then the first instance and the third instance will give you getting the same messages. So you can't have more active receivers uh, than you do partitions by default. Uh, 
there is another concept in these kind of brokers called consumer groups. And so this is when we've got different applications that we would want to uh, kind of read from the same broker. And so we talked about before just having kind of one receiving application receiving from partitions. That's like a replica of the competing consumers pattern almost. Um, this is like having more than one subscription. And so if you can imagine a consumer group is kind of like a subscription idea uh, in that each consumer group have, will have its own kind of what is the current offset for each topic and for each partition. And so here we can have, uh, we've got this third process that's subscribing to um, to this topic. It's a different consumer group. And so it doesn't get counted with those other ones and it'll actually get uh, messages from both of these uh, partitions. And this is how you have more than one application reading from a topic. And this is why we don't delete messages from the topic uh, because we want them to be available for when receiving application two comes along to read from it. Uh, and so that's it for a brief introduction to distributed log brokers. In this video, we cover the fact that distributed logs have topics that effectively work just like queues. They don't really have subscriptions for each kind of message receiver. Um, it's up to the receivers to remember the offset that they need to read from. Um, although in truth, the client libraries will normally help you with this. Uh, to scale out our systems, we divide our topics into multiple partitions, and then we can have a separate consumer for each partition. Different applications that will receive from our topic, we refer to them as consumer groups. Um, and different consumer groups are independent from each other in terms of the consumers and the offsets they're consuming from. So they are the closest representation to a subscription in this type of broker. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give me a like. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more and you can hit post notifications. And if you want to reach out to me, these are my social media handles uh, shown below. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.